Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. Over the next two videos, I'll share with you a complete and comprehensive tutorial on how to use Microsoft Teams chat and conversations. This video is part one of the tutorial and we'll focus on what we can do in a chat. Timestamp is included in the description, so feel free to skip ahead. Part two of this video to be released next week will include the following topics. If you don't want to miss out on the next video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first thing you should know is that you can have an individual chat with one other person or a group chat with multiple people, and you can also have a conversation within a Teams channel. Think of a chat as a private message between you and someone else or a group of people, whereas Teams channel conversation is more public that can be viewed by everyone who belongs to the Teams. To start a new chat, go to the chat tab and click on the chat icon. We can enter the name of the person we want to chat with. We can also enter their email, group, or tag. Don't worry about all these different options for now. We'll come back to it later. As we type, team suggests different people from the organization's contact list, and it'll also suggest guests who have been invited. If this is a group chat and we want to include additional people, we can continue to enter their names. Since this is a new chat and we've never had a chat with this specific person or group of people, this main window will be blank. But if we had previously chatted with this person or group, chat history will show here. Now we're ready to compose our message. We can simply enter our message here and either hit enter or press this airplane. One note of caution here, I often make the mistake of hitting enter thinking it'll create a new line and it ends up actually sending the message prematurely. For a new line, we need to press shift and enter, but this is easy to forget. What I suggest is for us to get in the habit of sending the message from the expanded compose box. And here we can press enter for a new line and it won't send the message until we hit the airplane. A shortcut to expand the compose box is control shift X. So in this expanded window, we have the basic formatting options such as bold, italic, and underline. And these have the same keyboard shortcuts as anywhere else like Word and Outlook. The next set of formatting tools allow you to highlight, change the font color, and font size. For highlights and fonts, we have a basic 10 color palette. And for size, we are limited to just small, medium, and large. Then this button removes all the formatting we have applied. We can also choose different outline levels if we're writing a long announcement. We can indent and outdent. and add bulleted or numbered list. If we want to quote someone, we can highlight the text and select this button. And if we have a long hyperlink to a document or a website and want to replace it with a shorter, more descriptive text, we can enter it by choosing this button. And the dot 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 menu will reveal more options to include code snippets, horizontal rule, and a table. And finally, we have the undo and repeat options, but it's just easier to use Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y rather than digging through these menus. Next, we can set delivery options. There are three to choose from. The default, of course, is standard, but we can choose important or urgent. Urgent will notify the recipient every two minutes for 20 minutes. So if our goal is to annoy somebody, we can choose this option. Otherwise, we should stay away from it. 
For attachment, we can choose to pull file either from OneDrive or upload from our computer. And if you're in a Teams conversation, we have an additional option to pull from a Teams SharePoint site as well. And we're not limited to the Teams channel that we are having the conversation in. We can navigate to other Teams and channels and copy the file over. In this case, we would be creating a duplicate file, not linking to the original source. Here's something worth mentioning. If we're in a one-on-one -on -one chat or a group chat, the uploaded file will be saved in the OneDrive of the person who uploaded the file. This means if this person leaves the organization or otherwise makes changes to their OneDrive, the file will no longer be accessible by the other people in the chat. In contrast, files uploaded in a channel conversation will be saved to the team's channel SharePoint site and live in the document library. Even if the person who uploaded the file leaves the organization or leaves the team site, the remaining members will still have access to the file. Emojis. This is straightforward. You can scroll through and select any emoji or search for one. I also want to call out that as in any other field that accepts text in Windows 10, we can type Windows and semicolon to bring up the Windows emoji as well. We see that there are more choices here, so it's good to keep this in mind. If emojis are simply not enough to express our emotions, then GIFs might do the trick. You can browse or search for the appropriate GIF to make the message a little more interesting and dynamic. And we can also add stickers, which allows us to customize the caption. Let's say that while we're chatting about a project, we decide that a meeting is needed to align on a few things. We can just click this icon here and it'll launch a new meeting dialog box. All people in the chat are already added to the invite, so we just need to fill in the rest and send. By the way, you can always delete a chat draft by hitting this trash can here. Stream is a video platform. All meetings we record in Teams will be saved to this platform. If you want to share a specific recording, we can go to Streams to copy one of the URLs to the video and paste it here. We can open up Microsoft Edge, navigate to your Office 365, click on the app launcher and choose stream. Here you can go to my content for our video recordings, click on video. And here you'll see a list of all of the videos that you've recorded. Click on dot, 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 then share and copy the link. And go back to Microsoft Teams, click on stream, and you can paste the link here. We can send a badge to someone. Rather than simply typing good job, a badge will add fun element to it. Click on the badge icon, choose your badge. Type the name of the person that you want to send the badge to and they have to be part of the chat. And type in the optional note. Preview your badge and hit send. The very last icon here on the bottom is for approvals. If you ever need an approval from someone within this chat, you can click on this approvals icon Type in the name of the request. Enter the names of your approvers. You can have one approver or multiple approvers. They all need to belong to this chat. If you have multiple approvers, this toggle button will be enabled where it allows you to require response from all approvers. Let's leave this off. We can type in additional details. 
and we can add an attachment if we choose. We can choose a file from OneDrive or upload a file from our computer. And we can enable custom responses from the approver. Let's leave that off for now. Hit send. We can always come back to this chat if we want to check the status of this approval request. Or we can go to our side pane, go to our applications, and launch approvals app from here, where it will list all approval requests. And we have the option to cancel the request if it's no longer needed. Back in the chat window, going through the options on the bottom, if we click on the dot 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 menu, it'll reveal additional apps that we can pin. So if you wanted to pin the weather app, right click on it, hit pin. Now it will appear on the bottom. So here, you can click on it, search for location. You can enter a city, zip code, or location. There we have it. So that's it for this video. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Next week, I'll release part two of this tutorial and we'll switch over to Teams channel and look at conversations and announcements. And we'll review these other topics as well. If you enjoyed the tutorial so far, hit the like button. And if you want to be notified when part two of this tutorial is uploaded, hit the notification bell. And if you enjoy productivity contents like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks and bye for now.